the bale spheres, be able to pick these things up. This is not sketchy at all. Been here for five minutes and they're or for two minutes and they're already hassling me. Hi kitties. Watch yourself. Watch yourself. Mummy. So you get your tail caught. Meow. So, well guys, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all. Welcome to Heart Tongue Family Farms. There's the baby. Well the old baby. Today we're gonna be prepping for some Iowa whitetail. Some deer season. So, my dad has these two brand new deer sheds made. Look, actually pretty decent. Yes, they're not perfect, but they were cheap, as in like 200 bucks total, I think. So what we're gonna do is we're actually going to take the loader tractor and attempt to uh, put them on. My dad bought a running gear, an old running gear, sitting right over there. Bought an old running gear, we're gonna go stick one of these on there, so. He's not up here yet, but I'm gonna go prep for it. Kitties, hi. Oh, my dad and his cats. That one's actually pregnant, the black one. And he's got another one up here. So, yeah, cat's looking good. So let's go see if we can pull out the tractor. Like I said, we're gonna try and see if we can, with the bale spheres, be able to pick these things up. My dad's a little uh, not as confident about it, but I think we'll give it a shot. It's worth a shot, at least. You guys haven't suspended a while since you guys have seen this, but this is the rear bale spheres. My buddy, uh, this was, we found this actual spear or this back face plate. Found that at Pat's place. He's letting us use it. And my buddy of mine painted it up. And the spears, I have no clue where he got. Yeah, no clue at all. But anyway, let's go ahead and pull this unit out. All right. So what I'm gonna try and do is I'm gonna try and take these bale spears into the uh, shed Shove it in there as far as possible. I'm gonna take a ratchet strap, go around it so I can try and keep it tight. But we'll see. See what my dad's gonna get up here though first. So again, what I'm trying to do, taking these bale spears, is gonna slide as far in as possible. Ratchet strap, lift up a little bit. Ratchet strap around to there. I hope I'll be able to lift up and set it on that running gear. All right, so I got her shoved in right now, so I'm gonna take a ratchet strap and see if we can ratchet strap her. All right, got the ratchet strap on. I literally had like an inch to spare, if that, on the length of the ratchet strap. So, hopefully they cut that one right so it's even a little bit shorter, but we'll see. Now I'm just waiting for my dad to come here and get this running gear. I think I'm ready to go. I'm hoping that if I would just raise up and tilt back, that'll provide enough tension, kind of tilt the whole thing back. We'll see. That could work. Got her suspended in the air now. What's that? Work in progress right now. All right, we got the deer blind suspended. So now, I'm gonna go ahead and move it over to the running gear and we're gonna put another baseboard on there because we only have one four by four that goes down the middle. It goes on the left side, we want one on the right side too to balance it. This is not a teeter-tottering balancing act whatsoever, nope. This is not sketchy at all. So we're making sure we stay in clear of this thing. Because yes, it's uh, it's not perfect, but it's all we got to work with. So we just rested it on the trailer so we can get another 4x4 four four runner. You can kind of see we got this one right here. We don't have anything on the other side. So we're going to get another runner in there, drill it in, or screw it into the bottom here. So we have something to sit on and it'll be good. Go GoPros aren't just for taking a cool video. The magnet's also used to find bits when I lose it. Look who showed up! Hi Bella! Hi Bella, look at the camera! Oh, there's a camera there. Hi, she's having fun. We're gonna try and stick it on the long way right now. How wide, how wide are all those 4 by 4s Well, it's set in between? Why don't we just leave it like that then? You can always adjust it a bit. Right. Let's try it. Yeah, 
Yep. Yep. All right, so we're gonna try because the door is on the on the front side, the big face. So we're basically gonna try and put it so it's wide on the trailer and see how that looks. All right, we got it on the trailer, so that's a uh, positive. I'm just realizing how are we gonna shoot out that window? So what these are gonna be, guys? These are gonna be deer blinds. We're gonna set up in our field. They're elevated. They're on a trailer, so we can move them. It's gonna be really easy to get them out and pull them off when we're done. It's gonna be kind of nice. So let's go ahead and pull pull out and see how it looks. Awesome. And there she is. And here she is. Got her pretty square on there, if I do say so myself. Very square, actually. These back tires are a little bit low. You know, air them up a little bit, but you can kind of see we got it leaned, biased more towards the back. Mainly so we're gonna put like a little, build little stair steps right here. Build little stair steps so you can hop up, hop up, and hop in. Wow. Uh, we probably should replace that floorboard. That one shot. We'll hop in and here's our shooting lanes. So we got a shot right here, shot right here, shot right here, shot through here. Cool. Now we're on the trailer number two. We got that old hut off of this one and I just kind of pulled it down here. My dad's airing up those tires and I feel something climbing on me and slimy. The old ants are in there. Jeez. They weren't biting me or anything, which is good, but still, no thank you. First one's on the trailer, second one's about ready to go on the forks. The second one has lift off. Tilted too far back though, I don't like that. I'm gonna tilt her forward. Gucci. So it's gonna end up on there eventually, but we're gonna do the same thing we did to that last one. We're gonna screw a four by four along the bottom as a runner. I just realized I cracked my mic, so hopefully it still works. Got our running boards on, got our trailer all spruced up. Now it's time to take the tractor, lift it on. Go ahead and I'm moving that little itty bitty bale. Moving that thing out of the way so we can park both our blinds and wagons right here. We'll be golden. Perfecting my trailer backing skills, that is for sure. My wagon backing skills, I should say. I'll actually show you guys this one. Backing up a trailer like this takes years and years of practice. I am not awful at it, but I'm not great at it by any means. And as I say this, I'm going to over-rotate this one. Start over. Because basically with the, with the two axles on the trailer, you get a steerable axle there. It makes it difficult to maneuver, especially when you got an older truck that has crap for turning radius. I'll get her. Alrighty, this one's backed up. Only took about probably 15 shifts of the transmission, which when you're backing up trailers like this, that's actually not that bad. When you gotta go around a corner and get real close to a building, that's really not that bad. But I'm happy, but I'm hot. Job well done. Those things are on the trailer and our redneck blinds are just need final touches. Spray paint some orange on there. Put the blind, put the chair and stuff in there. And our redneck blinds can be ready for, se for season. For muzzle loading season and depending on where we put them we'll use them for shotgun season be nice that they're elevated this year step in the right direction so let's head to the farm oh yeah they still don't have power here two days after the big storm hoping they got it back here soon but i know pat and nathan were just working on the generator just so here's our nice oats bales and right now we're working on getting uh power to the farm down at pat's place he's got a big pto generator that uh they got we run it they'll run at nights and at this place we got two generators a propane and a gas powered one the gas power one will power my grandma's house the propane one powers the farm or at least the essential part of the farm but you can kind of see in order to get this door open we kind of pop the lids or pop the the motor handles and got her up out of there there's our propane jenny they're saying we might not have power on the farm for a week that's fun all right generator's running we're gonna head up on top of the hill and finished cleaning up the uh, cattle shed that got destroyed by the uh, windstorm before. I'm gonna take my drone up, make sure there's no big pieces that we're missing. So We've had a couple guys working on it all day, so we're gonna go up there and help them finish it up. Jenny's working. Thank you to the electrician that came down and helped us. He's a retired guy, old family friend. A local handyman kind of helping us clean this up. He was the one that helped put this building up. He's the one that basically does all of our uh, handyman GC, general contractor type of work. Kicker construction out of uh, Springbrook, Iowa. He does a lot of stuff for us. And he came on a moment's notice, lent us a generator, came up here with a skid loader, put his other building projects on hold. 
he's a nice guy and does great work. Pat and Nathan are over there uh, scoping out the place, but that's kind of what it looked like. There's an I-beam that used to come down right here, got ripped out by the concrete and everything else got thrown. It's pretty nuts. So you'll kind of be able to see here that these I-beams, they're bolted into the cement using big long bolts go into the cement here that's how all these i-beams are around and you can kind of see when this thing went broke this concrete broke this concrete and actually here's where the major failure was right here snapped all this concrete off which basically bent this big old i-beam laid everything over and the wind just kind of picked up and shoved everything we got stuff that landed two three hundred feet into the corn it's absolutely unreal this He's trying to get the building ripped off. There it goes. Trying to just break it down. Unreal. So much damage in here. And even the stuff the buildings didn't hit, just look at the wind just snap these corn off. It's gonna be fun combining this. Not really. What's up? Jeez. That sucks. It's hard walking through corn, standing corn, let alone down corn. Now we're taking the skid loader and just running over stuff. Only way to get this big stuff out of here. That's much easier. I'll say. Took five bucks worth of corn too. What is this crap? What do you do? What do you do? So guys, this drone actually provided some really helpful, uh, kind of, it was a really helpful tool to figuring out where all the debris was. As you guys saw, we were kind of out there cleaning and cleaning stuff and the drone actually kind of helped us pinpoint exactly where to go. Cause I could, you'll see here soon when I fly around, but, um, yeah, you can kind of see just another aerial picture. Just look at that big eye beam. Like, good Lord guys, like that's huge. And it just got ripped like a paper shirt. But uh, anyway, this drone was able to kind of just fly out here like I'm doing right now. And I was able to see that little bare spot on the right is where we took the skid loader through. As you can kind of see the skid loader path. You can still see there's tin there, tin there, tin below us, tin to the left. There's tin everywhere that it's just not worth getting it right now i mean we'll get it when we harvest we'll just hopefully won't send anything through the combine but this field is going to probably take a day to harvest even though it's 28 acres and it's just going to take that long because we're going to have to be to have someone with a four-wheeler just con and the skid loader just constantly grabbing debris not a good deal guys but and now i also kind of want to touch on how we're going to plan on fixing this uh right now last time i talked to the fam um really we are just going to keep uh as you can kind of see with this picture right here, that's the main failure point. And what we're going to plan on doing is um, kind of putting, we're going to rebuild it. We're going to, um, not going to tear everything down. We're going to probably reconcrete it. And because that's such a small section, that's only about eight inches in um, the direction the wind came, east to west, whereas the other pillars are more close to like 16 to 24 inches around, that eight inches isn't that much section. So we're going to put like a big steel plate on both sides to kind of help distribute that load is what we're kind of thinking right now. But anyway, let's keep moving on with the video. Here's one of the reasons why the uh, power shut down. Yeah. Blocking this man's, our good friend's driveway here. They said they won't have crews to get to this thing for a couple days. I think they're just, I know the telephone lines are down below and the power lines are up top, so I don't know, maybe the one, of the, one of these are power lines, but either way, it sucks. Yeah, there's Dalbert right there. Alrighty guys, I just realized I did not film an outro for this video, but just a quick uh, interjection before we close out this video. I do apologize for really the, my disappearance over the last couple of weeks. I've, I'll post an update video about this on why I really haven't posted in a couple weeks. I know I've had plenty of texts and messages and stuff, but I do apologize for that. Videos will start resuming here soon, but again, I'll have a follow-up video at the end of this week to kind of explain a little bit more on why uh, the viewer guys really haven't seen me in a while. A couple highlights of that, uh, lost my GoPro, been traveling and working a ton, and I've been out in the middle of nowhere. So, 
Anyway, the update video will be out there later. But anyway, let's close out this video, guys. I hope you truly did enjoy this video. If you guys did, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Hearthstone Family Farms. And of course, guys, as always, ta-ta for now. Thank you guys so much. You guys are amazing. See you.